Hey, hey, Joan here, Real Hard Reviews. Hopefully you are having an absolutely wonderful day today. I am happy to be back, and today I'm not looking at the Strix 1070 exactly. I'm looking at a deal I recently procured from a miner. This miner had about five Strix 1070s and won 100 bucks for all of them. I thought, hands down, I'm going for this deal. He said, guarantees four of them work, but they're overheating because of the fact that the fans were cracking. The fans are actually breaking, as I can show you right here. The fans were just falling completely apart. They just rip and fall apart. There was nothing he said was getting caught in them. And where you'd first go, uh, I don't believe him, maybe he just assembled the system wrong or something else. Nope. The Strix edition of the 10XX series cards had a massive problems with the fans ripping apart. And instead of Asus being good old Asus, which I have known and loved for years, they uh, instead don't really care. They want to charge the full price of the device to replace it. As one of our own guys, GAC45 here, tried to RMA two 1080 Ti's and they sent us a bill for $4,000 to replace them. So we completely passed on that because someone at Asus is drinking something too good and we had to just get the cards back. He ended up swapping on similar coolers to what I'm going to talk about today and getting them working. So first I was able to get two of them fully back together and working with all new fans swapped around from the other ones and nice and easy switch to do. And they test fine, they run fine. One of them, so this one here is swapped out to have MX4 compound on it. And this one here is completely stock, still using the original compound as there's no break on the original seal unless the guy was really good at removing that. And I'll have the specs and testing for heat shortly on those two. But today, I want to look at two other products for options to cover this. In case you got shipping delays on the stock fans, or maybe you want to overclock it more, or do something completely different. Option one was this Kraken G12 that I've had sitting around forever. I ended up putting that in there. I think it's only about 25 bucks plus the cost of an all-in-one. So that's the guy sitting right here. 25 bucks plus the little all-in-one that I had sitting around 120 millimeter one and the performance is actually pretty good It's quite silent, but there's a lot of cables and mess that comes off that but as an option for a silent option You got an all-in-one kicking around It could be your option for under hundred dollars or the $54 option and my preferred option is the Arctic Accelerator Extreme 3 this is an absolutely beautiful cooler and once put onto the Strix cards, you can keep the back plate, kind of give it the Oris look and use the back plate from the mounting bracket from the Accelero. And you just got to put on these little heat sinks. It's a bit of work. Take the whole card apart, clean it, put on the heat sinks for the, v for the RAM, as well as on a couple other spots and chokes and areas that get hot. The guides are actually pretty good. They'll show you where to put all those. If you're worried that you don't have the right adapters or the right plugins, which this card does not, it does not have this exact one. It comes with a Molex to the four pin in both 12 volt and seven volt adapters. So if you want it to run really dead silent, you go to the seven volt. And if you want it a little louder, but you want that best performance you can possibly get, you plug it into the 12 volt. I'm gonna right away talk about things I didn't like about the install. One, it says that it only takes like an hour for this to dry. No, let it dry overnight before you fully assemble it. And that's about it. The install was a little bit messy. It's permanent. It, they're kind of glued on there with compound glue. And it wasn't difficult. It was quick, easy, and I do like that. It comes with lots of extra parts. Like I've still got this thing full of extra bits for screws to go everywhere. Uh, if you want to end up using it on another card, you more than likely have enough of everything to swap this again to another card later on. It does run quite silent, even on the 12 volt, it's not too bad. And with all that out of the way, so $54.99, I believe is the price tag on this, up to 300 watt TDP. Arctic does a great job if you need to replace a GPU's cooler. And once on that actually doesn't look half bad, like that looks pretty damn sexy. Like th that is good. I love how it looks. It, it's bigger than the Strix. So head to head, we're, we're gaining about another, what, one or two inches there. It's not too bad. It's a little bit longer, but it mounts nicely. Great airflow. Everything runs cool in it. 
And with that, let's jump right into the charts and I'll tell you how it does. So first and foremost in our charts tonight, we're going to talk about the stock Strix 1070. So in my test bed at a 22 degree room, kept climatized, so it never went above 22 degrees, one hour of fur mark, we had a max temperature of 61 Celsius and a average temperature or a minimum temperature, which is your idle temperature of 28. Swapping in and putting some MX4 on the GPU, just because you never know what condition that compound is in. And we have an idle temperature of 26, dropping 2 degrees on idle, and 60 degrees after 1 hour of firm mark. That's not too bad, a 1 degree change for 30 cents worth of compound, and you can use the rest of the compound on a GPU, CPU, or anything else you'd like. And that was using the Arctic Silver MX4, my preferred compound. Then let's jump into the... Strix 1070 with the NZXT G12 cracking on it, and whew, not too bad, not too bad at all. So, we're now dropping to an idle temperature of 24 degrees, which is quite impressive. It's actually running in the background, so if you can hear it, that's what the fan is you can hear in the background, but in all reality, it is quite silent because it's going to use whatever all-in-one you got. So, if you got a loud all-in-one, if you got a 24, uh, 240 millimeter or something else, you could probably get these temps down a little more, but this is just me running a little uh, cooler master 120 millimeter all in one with a better fan than comes with it and it's pretty impressive and then at the top temperatures after one hour firm mark we have 53 degrees not bad not bad at all so that's about eight degrees under stock now we're going to go into the impressive so we've now got the again the strix 1070 but with our accelero extreme 3 at 7 volt idle temperature 24 degrees. This doesn't change from the 12 or the 24. It both seems to be the 12 or the 7 volt, sorry. They're both going to run at about 24 degrees. Not bad. But the maximum temperature, one hour firm mark, is 49 degrees. That is a massive drop in temperature. Even beating out the all-in-one. Going one further, throwing the 12 volt on there. Exact same format. We just plug it into the 12 volt header and the fans are a little louder. 42 degrees at maximum that is impressive and one thing to blow your mind on all these I have run just a standard overclock on all the cards here just to pump a little more voltage in I pushed it to 100% on MSI afterburner as well as just let it run through the standard overclock all cards the same overclock and it's still running only at 42 degrees this is pretty damn impressive so with all that out of the way Specs over there, charts done. I think I got myself a steal of a deal. 100 bucks Canadian, that's like 80 bucks US. I got four working Strix cards. One of them, the original one I tried with this guy, with the Accelero 3, was actually the dud. It didn't work, and sadly I can't RMA it because they already knew about the bad fans, and he tried, and he got them back. That's why he ended up with them all for so cheap. So four cards for 80 bucks USD. Throw a cooler on, that's another 54 bucks. And I'm still sitting amazingly well on that. Now, these cards are not ones I'm going to be giving away. These are going to be used in different reviews, charts, everything like that, as well as our just custom builds that we do in the office and stuff like that. But did want to send a quick shout out to Shellback. Those guys do amazing donations to veterans. They build them gaming systems, streaming systems, everything else. And I'm actually going to be donating them one of my personal cards here. I only used it to get a chart and that was about it. So it's basically brand new, shiny and perfect. We're giving them our EVGA 1080. So make sure to join their giveaway because I'll be giving this away with a full gaming rig. This is a AMD 3900X, awesome gaming rig. So don't miss that. Uh, we're also going to be giving them a couple more cards because they're just awesome people and we really believe good charities deserve good people helping them and these guys are awesome. With that, the Accelero Extreme 3 dun, 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 gets my Extreme Award. That thing is freaking extreme. One of my favorite coolers out there for the price. Very, very good. The Kraken G12. A great unit. Very nice. I think it's got to have my Innovative Award. Not a bad device, and if you're already got an all-in-one kicking around, I say why not? And the MX4. MX4, that always gets our, not our extreme award, 
I'm saying that gets our excellence award because it is some excellent compound. If you're looking for a compound that just works and will drop your temps, even if it's just one degree, one degree could make all the difference if you're thermal throttling. But with that, I'm John with Real Hard Reviews. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and please, everybody, just stay safe out there. Have a good one. Goodbye.